Listening Library presents Within Reach, My Everest Story by Mark Fetzer and Jack Galvin Read for you by Jeremy Beck Prologue Within Reach May 9, 1996 We're on a steep section of the Lotse face when a group coming down from Camp 3 shouts for us to get off the rope. I dig my ice axe into the 45-degree slope and watch as a climber and five Sherpas carefully lower a sled stretcher. The bundled sleeping bag and the bit of twisted face with a froth of icy blood on its beard slide by me. Fell at Camp 3, the climber explains. Being unroped up there can get you killed. Will he be okay, I ask? The climber shakes his head. Not with his internal injuries, but we gotta try. The wind starts to pick up as we watch the stretcher's descent. At least he has a shot, I think. Lots of guys die up here, and no one even finds their bodies. Then a season or two later, a body will emerge from the snow as if it swam to the surface, still intact, if its flesh hasn't been eaten by birds. There are at least four or five corpses near enough to the roots that you can see them. Maybe someone should bring them down for proper burial, but it's dangerous even to get to them. Like the rescuers who just passed us, I'd help any live climber I could. I'm not going after dead ones. Besides, climbers are left up here out of respect for their love of the mountains. May 10, 1996 I always thought the tough part about climbing was, well, the climbing itself. Now, as we get into higher altitude... I'm beginning to realize that what we have to wear just makes everything so much harder. Over my down pants, jacket, and hood, I put on an oxygen mask, tank, heavy backpack, and goggles. The trouble is the mask. It has an extra long tube to the tank, under my arms, and around my back, which I keep getting twisted. I feel all tied up. Then the oxygen mask hits me just below the eyes, and the overlapping goggles stick out so far I have to bend way over just to see my feet. But if I bend over to see where I'm walking, I pinch the tube and cut off my oxygen supply. If I take the mask off to get a breath or to spit because my cold's much worse, the rubber gets wet and pretty soon I have inch-long icicles hanging off my chin. Put all that into the environment of the Geneva Spur and a steep yellow band of rock we have to traverse on the way to Camp 4, and you have high-altitude adventure. Not only do I have trouble breathing, coughing, and seeing... But now we have to angle across bald, slippery rock with crampons. Like trying to cross a steep concrete ramp on ice skates. Only it's covered with shale-like, loose rock. And when you look down, you know that if you fall, you have an express trip 5,000 feet right down the Lotse face. What we should be wearing are regular hiking boots with good gripping rubber soles. But even if we had them, we couldn't risk frostbite to change. Or even take off the crampons. Time for patience. Jabian, my Sherpa friend, and I slowly pick our way across, finding footholds for our crampons. We can hear the wind coming from above as if someone is slowly turning up the volume, and we know we'll soon be out of the protection of the Geneva Spur, and the already swirling snow will be like needles. Jabian and I finally get free of the Geneva Spur. We're on the long, steep section, very tired, when the weather hits like a hurricane in a fog of snow. We still have one more short, steep section before Camp 4, which we struggle through okay. I notice that Jabian does not have on his heavy mittens, probably thinking he wouldn't need them because he'd be in camp soon. The wind is blasting too loud for me to ask him. He must be all right. At Camp 4, tents, maybe twenty of them, erected by Sherpas and climbers already up here, are concentrated in one flat, rocky area. All the teams need and have tents up here the final refuge before the summit, 3,000 feet away. Camp 4 is at 26,000 feet. Above 25,000 feet, known as the death zone, the temperatures and winds can be so severe, the air so thin that climbers are in constant danger. Thinking and movement slow down. Even a small error like dropping a glove can mean death, because a hand can freeze, become useless. So these tents are vital to survival. Fortunately for Jabian and me, ours are the first tents we come to. I stumble inside, get the mask off, wipe the icicles and slime off my face, and Jabian mumbles something about his hands. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?